Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about sections 4.2 and 4.3. In both cases, I'm not doing everything that is in the book, but I'm touching on the most important parts, the parts that we will be discussing in class, if you miss class, the parts that will be on quizzes and tests, that kind of stuff. So in section 4.2, here are really just the two facts worth knowing. If we have a quadratic in standard form, right? So let's just remember standard form is when we don't have any parentheses or grouping, it's just some multiple of x squared plus some multiple of x plus some constant, where a, b, and c are constants, possibly negative, so it might look like subtraction. There's also vertex form. Vertex form is the one that's a little bit handier for graphing purposes because we can see the shifts. Both of these are pretty common, both have uses. So here's something to keep in mind. If your quadratic function is in standard form, quadratic functions always have parabolas as their graphs. That's just a universal fact worth knowing. This value of a here is the same as the value of a would be in vertex form. So what that means is it controls the direction and steepness. If a is positive, the parabola opens up. If a is negative, the parabola opens down. If a is bigger than 1 in absolute value, we have a parabola that is steeper than the standard x squared. If a is smaller than 1 in absolute value, we have something that's less steep. So for example, if a is equal to 1 half, it opens upward, but it's not particularly steep because a is positive, opens upward, but it's less than 1, so it's less steep than normal x squared. But if a is negative 3, that means it opens downward, it's quote-unquote upside down, and it's steeper than normal x squared. Exactly how to get that steepness just from drawing or looking at a graph is nearly impossible, but intuitively we have a vague sense that some parabolas are steeper than others. Now here is another thing worth knowing, and this is, we really just want to know this. If we have a quadratic in standard form, as above, a is the coefficient for x squared, b is the coefficient for x, if we want to know where the vertex is, its x coordinate is given by the shortcut formula x equals negative b over 2a. If you remember the quadratic formula, this is the quadratic formula with the most complicated part removed. We'll review the quadratic formula later on. But if you take all of this stuff with the radical and the plus minus, you're left with minus b over 2a. That will tell us the x-coordinate of the vertex. Once we know the x-coordinate, we can find the y-coordinate by plugging into the formula. So let's look at an example. All right, I'll, let, I'll show you an example, and then I'll pause while you try another one. So let's find the vertex for f of x equals, let's say, 2x squared minus 12x plus 11. So I have this shortcut for finding the x-coordinate. I will notice a equals 2, b equals negative 12, c equals 11. If I want to find the x-coordinate, I do minus b over 2a. And I strongly recommend you literally write this. Write x equals, write the formula. I've seen people do stuff in their head and make silly mistakes. I've seen people get a number and not realize it's the x-coordinate. So begin by writing x equals negative b over 2a. So negative b would be negative negative 12, which is actually positive 12. 2a would be 4, so this is 3. So what we know about this parabola is that it's the x-coordinate of the vertex is at 3. To find the corresponding y, well, we have the graph of a function. I plug in x to get y. So if I plug in 3, I would have 2 times 3 squared minus 12 times 3 plus 11. So 2 times 9 is 18. 12 times 3 is 36 plus 11 this works out to negative 7. 
So what we've learned here is that the vertex for that parabola, if we were to graph it, has an x-coordinate of 3 and a y-coordinate of negative 7. It opens upward, so a very rough picture of what this would look like is here is my vertex at 3, negative 7, and I have a parabola that opens upward, and it's kind of steep. I don't know what happened there. My parabola opens upwards, but it's kind of steep because y is equal to 2. Or sorry, a is equal to 2. Let me try another one, and then hit pause and do this yourself if you're watching the video. Uh, find the vertex for, let's say, g of x is 1 half x squared plus 3x plus 1. Okay, hopefully you've done that. And just a heads up, sometimes this would be written like so. We do want to realize that dividing and multiplying by fractions are the same thing. However this appears, we have a equals 1 half, b equals 3, c equals 1. So first we'll find the x-coordinate because we have a shortcut for that. Minus b over 2a would be minus 3 over 1, which is negative 3. So the x-coordinate of this vertex is negative 3. To find y, we plug in negative 3. So we have 1 half times negative 3 squared. Let's just remember, by order of operations, only x is getting squared. That 1 half is in front. Plus 3 times negative 3 plus 1. So this is 1 half times 9 minus 9 plus 1. So this is 9 halves minus 8. Let's make a common denominator. 9 halves minus 16 halves, which is negative 7 halves. So the vertex would have an x-coordinate of negative 3 and a y-coordinate of negative 7 halves. This one opens upward, but is kind of wide. So if we wanted to graph this, x-coordinate of the vertex is at negative 3, y-coordinate is at negative 3.5. So the vertex is around here, and it's one that's not particularly steep. It's kind of on the wide side. Obviously, I'm not really putting much detail or work into this. This is just a general idea of what it will look like. I know where the vertex is, and I know kind of sort of how tall it is. So the real takeaway from this section is you want to know that this is the shortcut for finding the x-coordinate of the vertex if we are in standard form. Again, if we're in vertex form, you can just read it off from the shifts. Now, let's look at the next section. I'll just combine these into one video because I'm kind of skipping around. This section is called modeling with quadratic functions. And again, I'm only going to do a little bit. There is an interesting fact that I will mention, but I will not show you exactly how to do it. Pardon me, I need to sneeze. Okay, so it turns out that if we have three non-collinear points where they all have different x-coordinates, they are on the graph of a quadratic function. So there's sort of an analogy here. If I have two points, you may remember from geometry or just in your intuition, that there is a unique line that connects those two points. Remember, lines are perfectly straight and go on forever. There are lots of curves that go through those points, but only one line. And it turns out if I have three points, right? those three points like so are certainly not all on the same line. But if they have three different x-coordinates, it turns out that there is a unique parabola. Now I'm just going to do my best to draw what I think it looks like. There is a unique parabola that joins them. With two points, we can do it with something extremely simple, namely a line. With three points, we can do it with something reasonably simple, a parabola. As far as algebra goes, parabolas are not that bad, considering all of the other kinds of things we could do. Now, 
Um, there is a way to learn how to find that parabola on your calculator that I'm just not going to go into. If you are curious, you may ask me and I will explain it outside class. Um, but in this section, there's also just a little bit about how can we use what we know about uh, quadratics to solve word problems. So let's just look at this. one. A model rocket's height is given by this formula where h is measured in feet and t, time, is measured in seconds. So let's just take a look at this. Just from the form, we can say, oh, it's quadratic. Right? There's a t instead of an x, but it has that x squared pattern. And the leading coefficient is negative. So I know this is a downward opening parabola. So I can just draw a very rough schematic drawing. I am not attempting to make this particularly accurate, but here is time and here is h. And I know when I graph this, I am going to have a downward opening problem. The exact details are not important. But certainly it might feel right to you that over the course of time, the rocket goes up for a while and then goes down. So we're seeing that pattern. All I need is this very rough picture. You could probably get away with imagining it. Certainly we don't need to draw this in detail. We will need to use a calculator for some of the computations here, but not for graphing. So the question is, what is the maximum height attained by the rocket? So our insight here is, this is a quadratic, and for a downward opening quadratic, the maximum occurs at the vertex. We just learned a shortcut for how to find the vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. In this particular problem, x, that horizontal coordinate, is actually t for time. So we would have oops, t equals negative b over 2a, which is negative 150 over negative 32. And I will get an approximate value on a calculator. So 150 divided by 32. You can just do that because the negatives cancel. And this works out to 4.6875. That's what we're learning right now. That's basically the time at which it gets to its maximum. So the rocket goes up for four or five seconds. After about four and a half seconds, it is at its maximum height. The question is, what is that maximum height? So to find the corresponding height, we'll just use this formula. This tells us height as a function of time. So height would be negative 16 times this value of t plugged in. Obviously, we're going to use a calculator. Plus 150 times this number plugged in for t plus 1. And I will do this. I may set myself up to do this video without my regular calculator with me. So I'm doing it on my phone, which is not ideal. Um, this part right here is negative 351.5625. The middle part is 703.125. So when we simplify the whole thing, if I'm not making a calculation mistake, I get 352.5625. And that is feet. So that is the answer to the question. What is the maximum height? Well, again, our, our approach was we think about the graph in just the broadest way, just a really quick diagram to get a sense of this. It's an upside down parabola, so the maximum occurs at the vertex. There are a lot of word problems involving quadratics where the insight is the maximum I'm looking for or the minimum I'm looking for corresponds to the vertex of a parabola. So we find out something about that point. What we found about, out about that point first is the time at which it occurs. But then we have a formula that tells us how height and time are related, so I plug that in and use my calculator to get the final answer. All right, that is it for this video.